So I'd made a film with Jerry and Kurt Albert in the Czech Republic for a Channel 4 show called High Five. And it was like, why don't we make a bouldering film? It just seemed obvious to sort of go to Fontainebleau to sort of showcase what bouldering was about. The idea of, you know, doing something with Jerry and Ben and, and going bouldering seemed like just a cool thing to do, you know, practice shooting, put something together. So I think it just, it was like, let's go to Font and see what happens. So we went to Font. Well, most of the client films I watch these days tend to be fairly serious. I mean, I really enjoy watching them and everything. And I suppose, yeah, the real thing was, is a bit different in, in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of messing around and it's got this fake storyline of me being a car mechanic. No, me being like a, you know, a metal worker and Jerry being a car mechanic, which doesn't really make any sense, but it's quite funny, isn't it? Obviously, you know, Ben and Jerry are just climbers. I mean, they don't do anything else. They just sort of doss around and go climbing. So there wasn't really any backstory. So it's like, come on, this is Sheffield. It's City of Steel. Let's do something. We just thought, yeah, Foundry, that would be good. And we went in there and I just remember, yeah, there's the anvil and the big hammer. And you could barely lift it. Everyone was taking the piss out of him, but the top came off. We put a bit of grease on him. And it was just a bit of a laugh. And then I think with Jerry, it was like, well, I just do cars. So I want to be a mechanic. Yeah, we, well, we were having a lot of fun at, uh, making the film and climbing and training. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you're climbing to enjoy yourself, aren't you? That's the one of the things I remember is that everybody just got on and we had such a good laugh. And there was never a time where people were like stressing or anxious, you know, even when the weather turned, it was like, it's all right, we'll come back. Because we're having so much fun doing it. And then all the guest stars that come along just added to that. And it was just like, it wasn't, you know, a proper road trip. That was what we wanted it to feel like. And I've, actually, I've never checked whether people just forward wine through all the silly bits in the middle or not. Although I get a feeling that, you know, when I talk to people about the film, they go, oh yeah, the bit where Jerry and, and Ben are fighting, that's a really good bit, or the snow, snowball fight and you know there's lots of things have changed in the last since the real thing came out 25 years ago there's nowhere there's no nowhere near as much sort of information out there about all these different venues and stuff but yeah it is incredible thinking about how things have changed because now you, you know you know exactly where a boulder is exactly how to do it you know all the different types of sequences there are but back then you know didn't know a local you had to work it all out yourself Boulder was really just a sort of form of training for, for, for doing routes really and wasn't you know anywhere near as popular as it is now but obviously now people just spend their whole lifetime bouldering and never put on a rope. We had an old-fashioned REST which is a, a daylight loading 100 foot spool of film so you've got 100 foot if you if you hold your butt your finger on it too quickly it's gone in about two minutes. Yeah, there was definitely pressure uh, for when we were filming, but it was, it was mainly because all the climbing scenes in the, in the film were uh, filmed on film, which is really expensive. So yeah, every time it's like, okay, Ben, you're on, you're going to climb this route, I'm going to be here first, we'll shoot it from this angle. Um, don't fanny around because it, as soon as I start pressing, you've got to finish in about 30 seconds. When it's, when it's whirring through the thing, it makes that sort of noise and you can hear the, the film feeding through. You know, and every second, I can't remember how much it cost to process, you know, one 30 seconds of film, but it was really, you know, quite a big part of our budget. And so you're standing there, you know, waiting to do calm or waiting to do carnage or whatever, and then you hear the camera go and you're like, right, go, and you don't want to like blow it. Now that I'm older, you know, and more sort of aware of the env environmental impact of cars and stuff, I look back at some of the scene, the driving scenes um, in, you know, in the real thing, and I feel a little bit guilty, you know, like doing donuts in, um, in, the, in the car park at uh, uh, Isatiste. I mean, I'd never do that now. I think maybe you couldn't do that now. It just seems like there's, it's, everything's too busy. There's too many people around. You just wouldn't get away with it but uh, there weren't that many people back there. But yeah, we were, we were, we were both myself and Jerry really into cars and motorbikes and racing and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we, we've got nice cars. So 
Um, yeah, that, that was sort of a big part of our life along with the climbing and training and the clubbing and stuff. <laughs> Probably when we got down to Fontainebleau, it's like let's do some stuff with a car, and then it's like, you know, the cameras are here, why don't we do a little bit more? Do you reckon we can do a little sort of donut y thing here? Or, and to be fair to them, I think they were like, mm, I'm not sure, it's probably not, oh, come on, we're here, you know, we don't need to put it in, we might as well film it, and then we can decide. So I think ultimately we probably goaded them a little bit into doing that, and it was probably a bit childish and not totally grown up, but. We were young. Now, yeah, why not? That is the relationship. You know, Jerry's the Joker, Ben's the serious one. But then, you know, what Jerry's front of being the funny man just belies his utter dedication to what he does. There's a, there's a there's a childish side to Ben as well, which is brilliant when it comes out, but he is a bit more deadpan. So that's what all comedy duos need, right? Is the, the Ernie to the Eric Morecambe. It's just a nice little story, isn't it, really? You know, we're sort of climbing and training in the Peak District, travelling to France, getting snowed off, coming back, doing some more training, jumping back out to France, finding it really hot, but just managing to get your project done right at the end. It's probably just people can sort of relate to it in a way, maybe. It's just sort of fun film. I think I was a bit late to the party growing up in London, um, only climbing inside and being like a, a comp kid. I uh, wasn't really like on my list of films to watch until I moved up to Sheffield and I think I was watching it on a day where it was snowing really heavily and so it was like quite enjoyable to watch all the fun scenes in the snow. I think I first watched it like about 10 years ago, I would have been like I don't know 12 or 13 or something on like the PC and I persuaded like my dad and my brother to watch it with me. And I'm sure they were probably wondering, like, what is this guy doing with his life? Like, what were you watching when that first scene came on? And they're, like, topless there, hammering away. It's like... I bet yeah. they were like, uh, is this actually a climbing film? Um, but I remember being like, oh, this is quite strange, actually. <laughs> like, funny and strange and, like, really not like any climbing trips that I'd been on, which made it, yeah, really entertaining to watch. Maybe it was just like one of the like classic kind of UK films you'd watch. So I watched Hard Grip before it for sure. And I think I watched Stone Love before it. So then maybe the real thing was like next on the list. Yeah, I think I was most psyched about like the training scenes. I wanted to get on the board and seeing all these like classic problems in the peak. And then I think I had my first trip up to the peak. And the first like place I went to, the first boulder I went to in the Peak District was like the Buckstone. After seeing like Ben do the dyno on that, and I remember thinking that was really cool. Did you do it? <laughs> I probably couldn't reach the starting line. Yes. <laughs> I like the fact they call one five nine, well one five eight and a half, one five nine. I think that's quite amazing. <laughs> I hadn't done Karma when I watched the film, and I guess that's like. Obviously Ben, it was done in 95 by Fred and then the real thing was filmed in 96 and Ben did it after in the film and stuff. And so I knew I really wanted to climb that. And then I remember climbing Karma and the moment I climbed Karma, which is kind of cool. Well, I guess I remember being like, where are the bouldering pads? Which I think just shows my age. <laughs> um, being like, yeah, they've got their little mat in front. And I was like, is that it? Um, but just being impressive. I tried a few of the boulders that are in the font scenes and being like, well, I think they make most of them look quite easy, if I'm being honest. And yeah, just seeing how like purely strong and like just good at climbing they were back then. And it's cool that I can still go and try all these boulders now and like feel a bit of a connection um, to that and them. I think 
But yeah, people take themselves a lot more seriously in climbing films. It's, it feels more like a sort of like 90s like skate movie. Like it's a little bit punk and like it's just everyone's sort of messing around and joking around. And everything's like a lot more professional and serious now, I think. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it is like, you're right, it is like the punk, it's like that kind of like, yeah, the skate films, like Day Wong Song versus like Rodney Mullen and stuff. And they're just like there, like messing about, doing stuff and filming it all and it's like the production isn't perfect obviously and it's on like handheld cameras it's a bit shaky and it's kind of it's just a different style of film isn't it it's more fun <laughs> i reckon i'm in like triple figures now with like viewings but <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i had it on like my like ipod touch and i just watch it like at every comp and just get like really psyched oh triple viewing <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine it's going to be like that popular. I don't know if people will really like understand it. I think like climbing is changing quite a lot. So I don't know if like the modern breed of climbers, if it will make any sense or if it will have any impact on them. There's got to be like the training sort of section for me that was like got me, what got me most sight. Even now, like uh, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, like play the uh, soundtrack and like have a session on the board.